I've been to five presidential museums. Last summer, I had the privilege of going to Texas and seeing three of them. And I want to give you the do's and don'ts of visiting the George W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum. The Oval Office experience. You need to go in there and absorb it and take it in and enjoy it. George W. Bush's Oval Office experience and exhibit is to me, by far the best. Uh, some of the other ones aren't fully to scale, or in Reagan's case, you don't get to actually walk into the exhibit, but George W. Bush's, you feel like you're actually walking in to the Oval Office. It's a full-size replica. Uh, you see the fireplace in the back. You see the furniture, the chairs that visitors would sit in. Uh, there's a replica of the famous Resolute Desk that little John John, uh, the son of President Kennedy, made famous. And then later well, on, uh, you, you, you saw a little bit of the history there in the National like Treasure that. movies with Nicolas Cage. Uh, some of it is not necessarily true, but uh, you, you, you know, learn a little bit of the history there of the Resolute Desk. But a replica of that sits in that office. You see it decorated up the way that George W. Bush had it at the time. Uh, there's a photographer that meets you uh, that's in the room there. We'll take your picture. Uh, you're free to take your own pictures and your own video. I thoroughly enjoyed the Oval Office experience, and you will too. The one thing you need to do when you go to the Bush Library is you need to do the interactive exhibits. And there's a number of them. But as you go through um, the September 11th, exhibit there, A Nation Under Attack. You'll relive on all of the visual screens there, the events of the day, uh, right there uh, positioned inside that exhibit is some of the twisted steel from the, the World Trade Center. But then the next exhibit is the War on Terror and everything that happens uh, after that. And there's a large interactive table, like a large iPad that you can then go and visitors can, you can uh, pull up documents and pictures and video, very, very high tech. But the other interactive exhibit I want you to check out is the Decisions Point Points Theater. You know, Decision Points was the name of George W. Bush's autobiography that he wrote after he left off. Visitors go in and sit down at a large touchscreen monitor and a presidential advisors come up on a big screen. They give you some real life scenarios and some issues that President Bush, while he was president, had to make some decisions on. Uh, a couple of them I've already mentioned, Hurricane Katrina, the financial crisis. And you sit there, this debate is the presented, the pros and the cons, the positives and negatives and visitors choose what decision they would make. And then in the end, you find out what decision President Bush made. When you walk away from that exhibit, there's one thing that I was struck with, and that is the decisions are not always black and white and cut and dry like we'd like for them to be. Another thing that you need to do is you need to eat at Cafe 43. Uh, Cafe 43 is open Monday through Saturday, 11 to 2.30 p.m. Some of these presidential museums, not all of them have a place for you to eat. A few do, but uh, there's two at the Bush Library. There's an eatery, another eatery, but we, we checked out uh, Cafe 43, and they strongly recommend that you make reservations, and we did that ahead of time. We went in, my wife and I went in. We liked the dining atmosphere and the menu, great attention from the staff, but you can go check out the menu online before your trip, check out the prices, but you, you really ought to check out and make time to stop in to Cafe 43 during your trip. One thing that you don't need to do is you don't need to make the same parking mistake that I made. Now, when you get onto SMU Boulevard to go into the library, there you need to slow down. Uh, there are signs for parking on the sides, but they're very easily, if you're not careful, they blend right in with their trees. There's trees planted on either side and, and even in the median. And so if, you're, if it's your first trip, uh, you can very easily just speed through and miss the, the parking signs like, like I did. Stop at the end of SMU Boulevard and then turn a right, right on the Bush Avenue there. It's clearly marked and you see the parking for the Bush Center there it's directly across from the library. There's a crosswalk that takes you across. Just keep in mind that it is paid parking, but it's it's certainly worth it. It's, it's very close and it's very ideal for going into the merge. Just be careful that you don't make the same mistake that I had and drive past everything. Don't expect the admission to be cheap. Well, I know it's, it's kind of a minor thing, but compared to some of the other presidential museums, uh, an adult ticket at the George 
uh, W. Bush Library here is almost, in, in, in some cases, double what some other presidential museums are. It's in the upper tier of pricing, uh, right up there. Reagan's is first and then Nixon's. The, there are group discounts available. Uh, active duty military are free. There's discounts for veterans, for senior citizens, for children. But listen, don't let the price stop you from going. It's worth the experience. Uh, figure it into your budgeting there. You're going to still enjoy and thoroughly enjoy. I think it's worth every bit of what you'll pay. Make sure you check out the prices before you go. Hey, if you liked our video today and you learned something and you got some value of it, hit the thumbs up button for us there. And if you haven't taken the time to hit the subscribe button and join our Prez Politics family, take that time right now to do that so you can catch our next upload.